ogulumizibwe katonda chitafa inza byonna e yabao aliwo era jjo kubawe mirembe ne mirembe we bale mukama atukumye we bale katonda atwagala we bale katonda obulokozi bwa fe era nga chechino chechirunji fo kutulo kwetolole chitya ekigambo cho kubigerebyo okulire ekigambo cho mukama bera wamuno mubuli za gendo okogera jetu lya kaungezi kalero okwate ku matugabo bonna abawuliriza ne birowozo byabwe obikomye we lye ekigambo cho ku nkomerero fennanga tulisidwa nga tukusidwa tutekebwe tekebwe olwo bwaka bako bugendo okujja bitu sabino kwega ili anga tuita mu Kristo omulokozi wa fe amina Good day brothers and sisters. Olunako olulunji baganda bangere banyinaze. Another warm welcome to all of you that are listening to us. Era twagala okwongera okubaniriza. Mwe mwe nayo je musinzira okutuuliriza. And we want to welcome you warmly as we continue with our series of messages. Tubaniriza nyo ngabe tugenda tweyongera mu byokuyiga mu byokuyiga bya fe from the waves of prime radio okuva ku mayengo gano aga prime radio it is my prayer that uh, you will be able to be blessed by the lord kwe kusaba kwangi mukama abawo mukisa i want to thank you for choosing to be with us njagala okubebaza olwo kusala wone mwerekereze bilala byonna and I will humbly request you that you don't share mean you don't eat this word of God alone but try to share it as you invite your brothers and sisters to come and be with us and we even today the lord has a message for us nerero mukamali nobu bako bulunji jetuli and we want to thank you for being with us ndagalo okubeba za mwebalo okubera nafe i want to request you to get into our message now ndagala mweteketeke nga tugenda okuyingira mu bubaka may i request you that you open with us to the book of genesis ndagalo okubasa abantu bikulire wa munamwe Chapter 1. We shall take verses 26, 27 and 28. Reading from the New King James Version, the Bible says, Then God said, Let us make man in our own, in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Katonda nayo garanti tukola omuntu mu ngeri yaffe mu kifana nyi kyaffe bafugenge ebyo mu nyanja ne bibuka waguru nente nente nensi yonna and so God created man in his own image. Katonda. Natonda omuntu mungeriye mu kifana nya katonda. In the image of God he created him male and female. Mwe yamutondera omusajja ne omukazi bwe yabatonda. Olinyo babiri mu munana. And God blessed them and say to them. Katonda. Naba wo mukisa katonda nayo geranti nabagamba anti mweyongerenga mwale fill the earth and subdue it mujuze nsi mujirie have dominion over the fish of the sea mufugenge byo munyanja over the birds of the air nebibuka waguru and over every living thing that nabuli echiri no bulamu echitambula ku nsi today we want to talk to you from the subject of the indispensability of the marriage and the family institution. Ekisera kino njagala tuogereko je muri. Ekyo kuyiga ekiriko omuntu ogugamba anti obufumbo namaka ebintu ebitasobola kujibwawo. The indispensability of the marriage and family. Obufumbo namaka bye bintu ebitasobola kujibwawo. Before we go any further may I request that we bow our hearts in prayer our heads in prayer as we seek the Lord. Katwe wombe katusabe let us pray heavenly father we want to thank you for another opportune moment you've given us to be together 
on the waves of this blessed radio of yours that you established as we share your word with your people. Twagalo kwebaza. Uru mukisana te go to wadde. Okugaba ne chigambo cho kumayengo ga ready energy wa wo mukisa. We want to thank you that you've been leading in our lives and we implore even now that you take lead oh lord. Twagalo kwebaza kubango zengo okulembera obulamu bwafe ne mukisera kino chenyini. Mukama tukulembere. Ministers of thine we take up the privilege to share your word as you have impressed it upon our hearts and from our lips. Nothing ever where is a bechigambo. Benjiri, Mukama to Saba, or younger or could take a chigambo kumimaja. Sanctify us, touch our lips, and make us fitting verses for the communication of your word. Or to Tukuze, or to Sanyese, and all to fool a mikutu, a jita mochigambo. And may your word go forth to the hearing of many that, Lord, you will also prepare the ground of their hearts so that it should be able to fall on receptive hearts and ground. And bless every listener that today you will be able to bless us richly. When we come to the end of this meeting, may we give glory and honor to your name. Fenda to Benga to Gulumizer in Yaru. We pray in Jesus' name. Yet Sabienga to Itamarinia Dunja, Yasu Christum Kamawafe. Amen. Amen. The indispensability of the marriage and the family is to. Obufumbo Namaka, Pierin Trebita Sobala Kujiwao. There are three cardinal occupations of life researchers tell us. Wadi Wemirimu Emikuru Satu, Muburamu, Ejita Sobala Kuvao. The Aban Kakesa. These are cardinal occupations in the life of every responsible individual. Research tells us that the first occupation of a human, a responsible human being is one's faith, religion, and that's the vertical relationship with God. This is said to be a very important responsibility. Because though you believe in God, you believe in Allah, you believe in something else, there is a vacuum in the heart of every person that yearns to communicate and link with the divine power. The discovery of this occupation is the realization of uh, a discovery that uh, we belong to a higher realm of existence than what even we involve ourselves in on planet Earth. One's faith, one's religion, and one's relationship with God is said to be a cardinal occupation of a human being. The second most important, the second most important uh, cardinal responsibility is that of one's marriage or family where you come from. We all come from some family somewhere. We all spring from some marriage between some two people somewhere. And that is where we spend much of our time and activities. The third uh, occupation of a human being is said to be that of one's work or employment where they go to earn a living. So these three, the three cardinal responsibilities are said to be very essential relationships in the life of any responsible human being. 
And these researchers have tell, told us that these three cardinal responsibilities are given in their order of importance. Basing on what our study was in the pre, in previously, we emphasized that uh, we were created in the image and likeness of God. We have the DNA of God. We have the breath of God. The blessing of God is upon us. We have a direct link and relationship with God. The Bible told us in Psalm 127 verses 1 and 2. That unless the Lord build the city, they labor in vain that build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, they guard in vain those that come. We also went over to Matthew 6 33, and the Bible was telling us that she gave us the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these other things will be added down. And from these two texts, we saw that Jesus' formula is that every believer's relationship with God and the church should take much of their time, resources, and energy. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. God first. If we put God in everything that we do, we can be able to find fulfillment, contentment, and success and meaning in life. And that's the vertical relationship. It's that relationship that we have seen as the occupation that is paramount. And that's where we should put our resources, time, and energy. And the, the visible symbol of that relationship is the church. That's the reason as to why every morning we need to wake up and thank God for another day. Seeing and, and, and read about God. During the day we need to meditate upon God. In the evening before we retire again we need to think about God. And that altar in the family and within our hearts is an altar that should be active tuning us directly with God every now and then. So God's relationship with the human beings should be deemed as the most important relationship in a person's life. I don't know how I can emphasize it, but uh, if you, you're looking for contentment, for success, and for progress in life, don't put God in his right place. Put God where he belongs. And all other things will fall in place. And so from this idea of the three cardinal uh, principles we see that God one's relationship is very important with God that is why you should be able to reserve a day fully holy specially devoted to the Lord it's called the Sabbath day thinking, studying and praising only the Lord your God
Yensonga luachi Ogwani dokule koruna kururambo Oruwa yitibu oruwa sabiti Ngo imba, ngo soma, ngo saba Ngo tendereza kukatonda But this should not be on only the Sabbath day Na yate techini na kumera kuruna kuruwa sabiti Wherever you go, go with an altar in your heart And worship the Lord And praise Him and pray to Him Wherever you are Na yewo na woboli, woboli mukulima, woboli mukutambula, woboli mumotoka, woboli mumitsenge, wona woboli berango tendereza katonda mutima go. Tune in and make that vertical relationship active all the time because the Bible will also tell us pray without ceasing. Buli jengo la gane yone katonda keberenga nwe vungundi vu kubaga ne Bible yetu gama timu sabi obuta yosa. And then when we come home apart from the Sabbath and the internal personal altar of the heart, when we come home, let us also mount the family altar, make it active. Abaga lwa nemu makaga fe okusinza kakubere kwa amani, kakubere kula mu. But apart from the one's relationship with God, which is the one's faith and the church relationship. Marriage and the family happens to be the second or the other most important relationship on earth. It's the second most important relationship or occupation of a human being. And then the other third one is one's employment. And it says that these three cardinal occupations are given in their order of importance. It is God first and apart from God the other most important cardinal occupation is one's family. You are not a serious Christian if you don't think serious about your family. You are not a believer proper if you have no proper active family relationship with your family member. And then the third, most, the, the third uh, cardinal responsibility is that of one's work and employment. Three cardinal occupations. One's relationship with God. One's relationship with the family. And one's employment or job relationship. And they're given in their order of importance. Unfortunately, the least one of the three usually takes the lion's share of our time, resources, and energy in life. We spend much of our time not thinking about the relationship with God or the family, but funding our employment relationship. Preparing ourselves not for work. Because work and employment should be a means to an end. We should go to work in order to get money so that we may be able to take care of our relationship at home and also with God. When you compare these three occupations, the one with God is for eternity. And the one for the family is a lifetime. But the one for employment is just but for a period of time. What is 
so un, uh, what is so disappointing in this uh, order of hierarchy is that we spend much of our prime time not funding and investing in God in, in the two other relationships. Uh, but in this third one, which is the least. It's as if we are born to work. It's, it's as if we are born to work. It's as if we are being trained for employment. When, when we wake up and we grow of age, we go to school from kindergarten to secondary to over to university and we are preparing not for our relationship with God not for our relationship for the family but for our employer. And so from the age of going to school, we are paying money much resources in order that, that we may equip in preparation for our employer. To qualify for a skill or which will give us a job and an employment. We invest so much money in education in order that we may get a certificate for employment. We invest so much time in our education in order that we may get knowledge and skills enough for our employment. What is so annoying is that whatever we get from there is, is that we are being prepared in order that we may work for our employer and enlarge their empire. When we come of age, the employer will want to take us on when we are when, when we are most productive. They don't employ us when we are young. They will employ us when we are in our twenties and in our energetic moment. After we have worked and built that empire and they have milked us dry at the age of 60 or so they will make us redundant and retire. But where do we go? We go back home. To Daeka. Many times at home where we did not spend much time. Where we did not invest. We wake up every morning. Very early in the morning. Going nowhere but to, to, to fund someone's empire. We come home in the evening only when we are tired and exhausted to sleep and wake up the following day when we have got strength again to go and work for someone else. And we do that for... for, for up to the age when we are still productive. At the time when we become, when we cease to become productive, they will lay us off, they will entrench us, or they will fire us. They only need us when we are still productive. But the moment you, you cease to be of ideas, you will go home. And at 65 when we retire, we go home and find when the children are no longer there, 
also and gotten no house. We come to a home where we've been strangers. Friends, I want to tell you that the family is very important. The family is very important. Our work and employment should be a means to help us get enough means of preparing us and setting, establishing us within the family. unfortunate thing is that we get into the family unprepared. Uncoached and untrained. And we suffer loss and disappointment within the family because we spent more time preparing ourselves in school for our employers. And when we are, we have been rendered redundant. We get back home. Because that is where we started also. Therefore, when we are doing other things, let us plan for our family. Let us invest time, resources, and skills and build our home. Because that's where we come up to. The COVID moments have taught us that some people have even found it very hard to stay at home. But this has been a prime time for us to consider and thank God for because of our homes. That you can be able to spend quality time with your spouse. Quality time with your parents. Quality time with your children. That you can learn and fellowship together as a family. But this has not been well understood and, uh, and taken care of because we think that work is more important than any other thing. My friends, one person has said that the biggest regret we will ever get, get in life. When at one's deathbed, we will not be that I wish I'd spent more time at work. But will be, I wish I'd spent more time with my loved ones. Friends understand no, what I'm saying. I want you to get me clear. I'm not saying it is wrong to work. But I'm telling you that uh, there is order of importance and priority and should be placed where it is due. Your relationship with God is most powerful. The second most important thing is your family and your marriage and your loved one. Work, work, work is good. But it shouldn't be at the detriment and disadvantage of the family. The primacy of marriage and the family institution. Marriage and the family and the Sabbath are the only two remaining institutions that we have as human beings from Eden. They are the only two institutions that God felt felt pleased to give us out of the garden. In the garden, we lost and, and left everything. But God was so kind enough that when he was sending man out of the garden, he gave man two institutions that preceded sin. And that's the Sabbath. 
which points to God's man's relationship with God. And marriage which points to man's relationship with one another. And uh, even then, marriage and the family, marriage happened to have been the very first institution that God gave man even before the Sabbath. May also point out that whereas the issues of religion, faith, and salvation are very important, but they came as a result of sin. Marriage and the family were God's intended ideals of occupation for man. I want to believe that if it were not foreseen, I would not be employed as a pastor. Uh, but uh, I am employed today. <laughs> because I have to deal with the church and to deal with the sin and to work for salvation. For others and my salvation. And this is a result of sin. But even before sin, God had deemed that man will be able to live in a family and marriage institution even before sin. And he gives them as gifts from Eden. The Bible affirms that the family is the primary church and the principal ministry of even the pastor and the church elder. May I point out that the family is very important. It's the very fabric of the church. In fact, the church, the family is the primary church. That is where true worship and true reading of the Bible and true praising of the Lord should be able to lead foundation for first and foremost. The functions of the church, those of us, of you who study religion and theology, mm. the functions of the church are the very functions of the family. It's the, the, the church functions, I mean the church functions are three. And the family functions are three. And so these are interrelated that you cannot divorce one from the other. In fact, churches are failing today because they have failed to take care of the best church which is called the family. Because whereas ordinary churches meet on Sunday and Saturday mainly once a week, the best, church, the best church called the family meets throughout the week. There should be worship, there should be praises, there should be prayers in every home every day, every moment. And researchers tell us that you can gauge the health of a, of a church by looking at the health of the individual families that make up that church. It is believed that whenever you see a struggling church, go back to the roots and you'll find struggling families. Because whatever we see demonstrated on church 
in church on that Sabbath day of meeting is a true reflection of what is happening in the individual homes that make up that church. The secret to proper church growth therefore is go back to the families and take care of the families and churches will sprout up. The, the family and the church, both of them exist for three functions. The first function is called the upward function. It is to relate with God. To worship God. To learn of God. To give praises of God. And to learn about the will of God. That is why the church exists. And it should be the very reason why every family should exist. Every family should connect with God. Because God established it for a reason. For worship. To relate with Him. To learn of Him. To worship and praise God. A family has failed if a family does not establish and, uh, and revive and fan its family altar. A family that has not worked on its family altar will encounter challenges than any other heathen. Connect with God. As a family. Because families originate and from God. The second cardinal responsibility function of a family and a church is called the inward function. And that has to do with nature. It has to do with study. It has to do with love for one another. It has to do with encouragement of one another. It has to do with unity and working together. And that is for the church and also for the family. That the church and the family should establish themselves into the inward function. And that's called nature. To get to one another, to hold one another up. Therefore, after we have connected with God, then we connect with one another. And that fabric of love connects us. And then we cry together. We cry together. together. And we move forward together. And that's the second function of the family. That love, your, love one another. Stay connected. And when we do that, we have fulfilled the second function. The third function of the church and also of the of the family is called the outward function. And that outward function is called evangelism. It's called outreach. And the idea is that after you've connected with the divinity in the vertical relationship and you have come into the horizontal inward relationship of nature you will get strength in order to tell forth the good things of God through that family. And every family should be an oasis in a desert. Every family should be a tower in a dark world. 
Kagabere omunalo kuli ketala mchizikiza. Every family should be a, a training ground for the community around. Kuli maka kagabere awatende keruwa bantu wabana yamu chitumi. Every family should live to tell the glories of God in the community around. Kuli maka kagabere wo okuogera kuburunji wa katonda mubantu. A Christian family exists for evangelism. A maka makuli style galina kubera olu akuburi daji. So that people see the goodness of that family. A bantu bala and they will come to us the secret behind that family. And your answer should be pointing upward. That it is God responsible for all the goodness that we so these are the three affirmations and functions of both the family and the church. But I'm saying, but I'm saying that I'm talking about the primacy of the family. The family is the real church. In fact, COVID has sent us back to the roots. God is simply saying that the church is not in that building somewhere where wherever you congregate. You've been congregating. Katonda <laughs> tugama. Nte kanisa. Terimu mchizimba. Evinene vyote tukungani reyo. Your church is at home. E kanisa yo. Erimaka. You are the priest of that, that church. Kwa mwami gwe kabona wa maka. Go establish worship there. Gwe kabona wo kusinza mako. Go establish worship there. Kendo teke yo kusinza maka. Do Bible study there. Give evangelism there. And let you teach your children and all the people within your household about God. And whether they burn churches forever, you will be able to connect directly with God because the priest of the family is present. It's for that reason that the Bible affirms that the family is the primary church. And, and the church, the family is the principal ministry even of the pastor and every church elder. I tell my pastors always in training that if there should be two responsibilities at table demanding your presence there is a church responsibility calling and there is a family responsibility calling the truth of the matter is Go to the church, to the family responsibility. Because that is your primary and cardinal responsibility. Even when you leave the church responsibility, there will be someone to take care of you. But should you leave this one here, no one is there to take care of you. Unfortunately, some pastors and church elders have abdicated from their, their, their primary responsibilities at home and have fully married and absorbed uh, uh, into the church responsibilities of the other. The truth of the matter is you are the husband there. But the church of Christ has its head and husband. By the way, even without you, that church can go on. You are just contributing something, but you are not the owner of that church. Uh, the, uh, furthermore, 
Even pet. if you as pastor or church leader died today, that church will continue. Right. Right. Uh, but I don't know about you, the continuity of your family. Therefore, mind about your family. Because it's the primary church. Teach your children to worship God from there. Teach them to pray from the family. Teach them the songs of God from the family. Give them Bible stories about God. And train them from home before they come to the congregation. When whatever family is established, the God is seeking a godly offspring. God is seeking a godly offspring. Thank you for listening. And God bless you.